I love IT. I really love IT. I don't care what kind of information technology it is, as long as the IT affords me to do something. I love it. The topic today is about digital revolution in science. And I think we live in very interesting times. We are not only happy and privileged, we are also obligated to take care of the future. The future is digital. And in the past years, we observed an emergence of a revolutionary way, of a new way to store, to process, and to use information. Distributed ledger technology, or a concept of it called blockchain. So where we are right now with blockchain is kind of where we were 30 years ago with internet. 30 years ago, almost nobody was thinking that internet will become such a success story. So, what is blockchain? Blockchain is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer database that consists of a network of computing nodes. And this database stores an immutable, chronologically ordered and transparent history of transactions, and these transactions store information, and the transactions are stored in a chain of blocks. That's why the name blockchain. And through a clever consensus mechanism that is based on game theoretical thoughts, the nodes in the blockchain negotiate what data is included into a database. And this leads to a, a reduction of intermediaries. So let me put it into other words. We do not need any persons or organizations to trust anymore. We trust in algorithm. We trust in math and cryptology, cryptography. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I think it is. And it's actually becoming even more interesting. Think of, I don't know, think of uh, Bitcoin. Probably most of you heard of it, a digital currency. Bitcoin is interesting because it was the very first implementation of blockchain. And from a technological point of view, we had distributed databases and even digital currencies long time before Bitcoin or blockchain came into existence. But why did Bitcoin or blockchain become so popular? Because as it was introduced almost exactly a decade ago, it solved two problems of digital currencies. The first, it solved the problem of double spending, so you were not able to spend the same digital currency, the same token, twice or more. And it introduced incentives for participating parties to share their computing and storage power. So if there is no central instance, or if there is no number of parties that are kind of running the database, why should one do so? And this was done by the so-called smart contracts. Now it's becoming even more interesting. If you have a process that is well-defined and everybody who is kind of participating in your environment agreed on this process and these processes are atomic, it means you don't need any human interaction and they can be executed automatically upon achievement of specific conditions, bam, smart contracts, and they might be very powerful. So, Bitcoin is maybe not the best example, but for software developers here, you can build loops, and building loops makes fun. This is what all the software you know consists of. So, 
taking all this tempting technical advantages together resulted in an emergence of multiple use cases in many industries. You saw it on the example of the digital currencies like Bitcoin or others in energy sector, in healthcare, and it's only start because it will completely transform the way we store, we process, and use information. But blockchain is not a silver bullet. If you have an environment where all parties trust each other, blockchain probably does not make any sense. Blockchain does not solve the CAP theorem. CAP theorem tells us that a distributed system cannot achieve consistency, availability, and partition tolerance at the same time. So it's like in the movie Pulp Fiction with Samuel L. Jackson. It is always a trade-off. Our whole life is a question of trade-offs. If you think of security, it's a trade-off between confidentiality and availability. By designing blockchains, it's a trade-off between performance and security, or between flexibility and anonymity. Even the design characteristics are trade-offs. What consensus mechanism do you take? What about scalability? What about throughput? If you decide to go with distributed ledger technology, even the concept of blockchain is a trade-off. In a blockchain, every block has exactly one predecessor block and exactly one successor block. But there is concepts where blocks might have multiple predecessor blocks or multiple successor blocks or where you don't need blocks at all, where the transactions directly refer to each other. Together with my team at KIT, I do research. Well, we do computational research and um, use contexts of IT, but in this particular case, we research on how to design distributed ledger technology so we can leverage them for science. And today, I want to talk to you about how distributed ledger technology will reshape the way we do research. And it's actually all about system design and participation. Let's start with system design. In research, we often deal with kind of sensitive information. So think of medicine, life sciences, Gen genetics, genomics, sorry, genomics. This is a very, very personal, sensitive information. Or think of, I don't know, social sciences, economics. This might be sensitive business information. And it's not only a question of security, so how to keep data secure from unauthorized access. It is also a question of what we call information privacy. What information is stored? Where is this information stored? Who uses this information? For what purposes does one use this information? Blockchain, as a type of distributed database, retains the benefits like removing single points of failure and improving integrity and availability of data. So with blockchain, we are able to protect the sensitive information we work with better than ever. If we stay with genomics, think of omics data. That's kind of big data. And blockchain was not designed to work with huge data sets. So huge data is a real problem. Right now, we use kind of hybrid solutions. So the data is stored somewhere in the cloud. And through blockchain, we are able to control the access to this data. I think there is a couple of open questions we will work on in the next decade. Let's talk about participation. It was never as easy to acquire and share information like nowadays. But a lot of people struggle of sharing information with us. Why should, for example, a data donor in genomics share the information with researchers? if people don't know what really happens with the data. 
or if they don't know what will happen with the data in 10 years because of the technological advances. So with blockchain, remember smart contracts, a data donor in genomics will be able to fully control what kind of data is used for what purposes. So if a data donor deeply cares about a specific disease, the data donor can decide to share the whole genome data with researchers working on this disease, but not to share none of this data with others. It is kind of in the principle of scientific nature, and it uh, is how we work, even if we hear a lot of this, that we work with kind of data silos. And the problem of data sharing in science may also be solved through blockchain. And not only data sharing, the way how we do research, how we as researchers are evaluated, how we as researchers publish our results, think of all these publishers and intermediaries, even the way how we will get funding in the future. This is only a couple of problems. I don't have the time to speak of more of them. There is also problems of if there will be a bunch of blockchains and there will be the problem of interoperability, how these blockchains will interact with each other. Also, this will raise ethical and regulatory questions that we will have to answer. But I believe that in order to realize the full potential of blockchain, we have to look beyond its IT value. As a disruptive technology, it is obvious that it will completely change our future. Our future as researchers, but also our future as individuals, as organizations, for industries. It will have an impact on our society. It will enable completely new models. It will democratize not only access, it will democratize the way we manage data and processes. I started my talk with the example of Internet, and I told you it became a huge success story. Nowadays, we criticize Internet, and we criticize it for some good reasons. Blockchain promises to solve some of these questions, and this is a transformative value. But transformation is a process, and you know it better than me, every process produces winners and losers. So it is our debt to our society to take care of this process. I would like to use my last sentence to invite you all to join my team and me in order to realize the opportunities and address the challenges so that we can make blockchain usable not only for us as researchers, but also for us as individuals, organizations, and society. Thank you.